Hi, and welcome to Yellowfin's Data Visualization Best Practices webinar. I'm your host, Courtney Coulter, and I'm a Customer Success Manager here at Yellowfin. As the name suggests, today's webinar is all about data visualization. Data viz is a hot topic in the analytics community, and especially important when you're working with data analytics solutions like Yellowfin. In today's session, we will be discussing what data viz is, why it's important, and then getting into five best practices we follow here at Yellowfin. Today's session is being recorded, so you can listen later if you wish. So why do we visualize data? It won't be news to anyone that data is an essential part of doing business. Data is used to make strategic decisions across all industries. It could be tracking workplace safety to help prevent accidents or measuring the success of a marketing campaign. Data is for any and all industries. And there has never been more data than there is today, and it's growing. By 2020, there will be around 40 trillion gigabytes of data. So we have more data than ever. We know it's important to make data-driven decisions, but it can be really overwhelming and information overload. This is where data analytics solutions can be really useful to help you navigate your data and turn it into insights. But they can't do everything for you. Your data is only as good as your ability to understand and share it, and that's where data viz comes in. By definition, data viz describes any effort to help people understand the significance of data by placing it in a visual context. Data viz helps us to process information. Our brains process information best when it's presented visually, like in a chart, rather than a spreadsheet. The quicker we can process information, the sooner we can get the insight. DataViz helps us tell a story. It's not enough to simply list data points. You need to engage your audience and take them on a journey so they understand the insight. DataViz also helps you make better decisions. If you can easily understand the insight from the data, you can make better decisions for your business. And finally, DataViz helps you to maximize value. You're investing in a data analytics solution for a reason, to transform your data into easily digestible and actionable business insights. Using data viz best practices ensures you're getting most out of that investment. Before you get started with your data viz, you need to make sure you know three things, your purpose, your data, and your audience. If you don't know these three things, creating your data viz is going to be much harder. First, you need to know your purpose. What is the question you're trying to answer and why do you need to know it? What decision is going to be based off this insight? If you don't know your question, it's going to be very hard to find your answer. Next, you need to know your data. Do you have the data available to answer your question? Is it in the format that you need it to be? If not, you won't be able to create the data viz you want. Last, you need to know your audience. Who's gonna see this data viz and what are their expectations? The data viz you present to your CEO might be very different to the one you present to the finance team or externally. Knowing your audience from the beginning ensures you take them into consideration at every step. This brings us to our first best practice. Choose the right visualization. If you know your purpose, your data, your audience, you can easily pick the perfect visual. Start with thinking about your purpose. Do you need to compare different metrics? Does that comparison need to be over time or comparing the whole? Or are you looking at the relationship between metrics or frequency? Or maybe location is a big focus or you need to report on KPIs. Choosing the right chart type to help answer your question will help you find and tell the story in the data. The appropriate chart will reveal patterns and trends so you instantly understand the significance of the data set you're visualizing. We're going to look at eight different chart categories. First, we're starting with charts that compare items. There are many different options to choose from. The most basic would be a simple column chart. This allows you to compare the values of different categories, like sales of products. We don't want to change this into a bar chart if you have a lot of different categories or really long category labels. My kind of rule of thumb is if you have to tilt your head to read the category labels on a column chart, you should change it to a bar chart. If you have multiple categories, like sales of products by gender and region, you could use a clustered column or bar or even a trellis chart. Next, we'll look at charts that compare over time. Line charts help you understand trends such as acceleration, deacceleration, and volatility. 
If you have multiple categories or metrics, you can add additional lines or even create a Trellis line chart. If your data is granular, like hourly, or if you're missing some dates, a step chart is a good option because the big jumps in the data will be more obvious. Area charts are similar to the line chart, but they have shading to show volume. Next, we'll look at charts that show composition. A few of these charts are really similar to ones we've already seen, but now we're adding another layer of analysis, the part to whole relationship. Rather than just comparing the metrics, we're also looking at how those metrics contribute to the whole. Stack bar and percentage bar are quite similar, stack showing the actual values while percentage showing the percentage. Stacked area is a good option for showing the part to whole relationship over time. Next, we'll look at correlation charts. Scatter plots are probably the most common correlation chart, just a simple way to show the relationships between two variables. It's a good idea to include the trend line to help make the relationship clear. Some relationships might be really obvious, others are more subtle. A bubble chart allows you to add additional variable to the mix. A heat grid is used to highlight relationships using color. They're easy to read because your brain can easily interpret the color pattern and therefore the relationship between your metrics. Just be sure you're using best practice for colors for this chart, but we'll discuss that more later. It's important to remember as well that you can have data that shows no correlation at all, which itself can be an interesting insight. Next is distribution charts. Distribution charts allow us to understand the frequency of values in the data set. A histogram shows the number of times a value occurs in a data set by group, like age, grades, or scores. I really like a box and whisker chart because it shows many data points in an easy to read way. Whisker usually represents the minimum and maximum points in the data. Box contains the median and the first and third quartiles. This is a really useful chart for pricing of products. You can see your maximum price, minimum price, average price paid, and the whole range of prices. And again, we have a scatter plot. A scatter plot isn't exclusively for correlation. It can be used to show distribution and especially helpful in identifying clusters and outliers. Next is location charts. Choose a location chart if where things happen is the most important part of your insight. A thematic map uses color in order to compare values of specific areas or boundaries. A bubble map shows location of data points using bubble size to compare the values. A heat map shows concentration in an area rather than a specific location. Raster maps are custom maps. This could be sales shown on a supermarket shelf or shopping mall. Maps can be very detailed from continents to countries to states to cities to postcodes, so it's really important to get the level of detail right. Only show detail that adds value. Now for the final chart type, we're going to look at KPIs. KPIs, or Key Performance Indicators, might be the most important data points you'll work with. They tell you how your, you or the business is performing at a glance. Big number charts show the value of a metric as a number. This could be number of users online, total sales for the month, anything where the actual number is necessary. Dialometer charts are used for measuring the performance or rate of change. These are great for important metrics like revenue versus target or growth versus target. You can really see how quickly you're progressing. We've gone through a lot of charts and while it can be overwhelming to have so many options, you can really make it easy for yourself by narrowing it down from the beginning and asking yourself the right questions. Make sure you have the right data available and you know your audience. Let's look at Yellowfin and see how we can make this even easier. I've already created a data table with all the data I'm interested in. I can use Yellow, a Yellowfin feature, Assisted Insights, to help me visualize the data. So we're going to look at invoiced amount. Assisted Insights automatically draws the insights from my data and creates visualizations as well as a narrative to help me interpret the data. If I like some of these charts, I can just click 
and that saves them to my chart builder so I can use them later. This is a good one. Now I can go into my chart builder. Now I'm in my chart builder and you can see the two charts that I got from Assistant Insights down here. I can also make my own chart. So I'll move a metric here. So Yellowfin automatically creates the best chart for me. And in this case, it's a big number chart. I can add in another dimension. So I'll add in demographic. And now the perfect chart is a bar chart. I can easily compare my different demographics. I can go another layer deeper, add in gender. So now I can see how gender factors in. I could change this to a trellis chart. And I think the last one I'll make is a heat grid. There we go. Yellowfin makes it really easy to make charts. So you don't have to use the auto chart, which picks the best chart for you. You could just choose whatever chart you like. So you can go into the chart library and there's a ton of different charts that you can choose from. If there's a specific chart you're after that's not in Yellowfin's library, you can also create a JavaScript chart here. So once you pick the perfect chart, you still have some work to do. And that brings us to our next best practice, formatting and styling. You need to format and style the chart to make it easier for your audience to understand and more aesthetically pleasing. Color is a way to give your charts more meaning. And as we saw earlier, in some charts, data can be represented by color. You can also use colors to highlight different categories or to represent a secondary metric on your chart. But be careful. Color used poorly can obscure insights and confuse people. There are three main color schemes we use. First is categorical. This means every category or metric is a different color. Use this when you really want to be able to tell data objects apart. It's important to use a color sequence that allows the colors to really stand out from one another. Next is sequential. This is using a single color to represent a metric low to high. Our brain associates darker colors with larger numbers, so make sure you follow that pattern or you'll really confuse people. Finally, the last one is diverging. Similar to sequential, but two or three colors that blend together. Green, yellow, red is a good option because people associate that with a stoplight. So green means go or good, red means stop or bad, and yellow is in the middle. Blue to red would also work as well. Uh, just don't choose random colors without considering the psychology behind it. Also note that one in 12 men have some sort of color blindness. So make sure your charts are as accessible as possible. There are a lot of resources online to help you choose a suitable color palette. Another aspect of formatting to consider are legends. Legends are essential when using colors and charts. You have to define what your color scheme means. Don't overdo it with legends though. If you only have one category or metric, a legend isn't necessary, and you should remove it to keep this chart simple. There are a few more things to consider with formatting, labels and grid lines. While charts reveal patterns in your data, labels can enhance the chart by displaying exact values. Labels are especially useful for paper-based or static charts that don't have tooltips enabled. Labels should truly be enhancing your chart, not telling the story. In my example, the number label is not the only important thing in the chart. The order and the height of the columns also add to the story. Grid lines are often something that add little to no value to a chart, especially having both horizontal and vertical lines. Grid lines can be useful if you have a large chart where it's difficult to align the data at the other end of the chart, or if you need to detect subtle differences between the values that are close to the baseline, or if you want to narrow focus on something important. The takeaway here is, if you use grid lines, make sure they're serving a specific purpose. The next best practice we're going to talk about is adding clarity. Make your charts easy to understand by telling people exactly what they represent. There are a few different ways you could do this, like using chart titles and sorting your data in a logical way. You can use chart titles to frame the story and purpose and meaning of your charts. 
there's two different ways you can do this. You can describe the query, so you're monitoring the data without being biased. So a chart title might be website traffic per quarter. The second way is to explain the insight. This is more storytelling. So the title might be website traffic growing exponentially. If you're explaining the insight, make sure the data shown is clearly supporting the story. It adds to your credibility and also ensures people looking at the chart don't get confused by looking for data that isn't there. You can also use comments and annotations to add context to your chart, such as where the data comes from. Now looking at sorting. There are three main types of sorting. Alphabetical, quickly find a category because your brain knows the pattern the metrics will be listed. Ascending and descending, they both allow you to tell a story in order and compare categories. There are other considerations like months of the year, for example. You would want to put those in order of occurrence, not alphabetical. Or a rating survey with options like high, medium, low. You wouldn't want to list them in alphabetical order or ascending order by rank, but in the logical order. You can achieve this in Yellowfin by using reference codes. Let's go back into Yellowfin. So we're looking at the chart that we made earlier, the heat grid. You can see that we're using a sequential color pattern and it's helping us understand the inside because my eye is automatically drawn to the darkest section. This helps me understand that the male adventure camp has the largest invoiced amount. The y-axis is a good example of sorting. We have a hierarchy for these products and they're always listed as adventure, relaxation, family, etc. So we use reference codes in Yellowfin to ensure the sorting always reflects the hierarchy rather than alphabetical because that's what makes most sense to our audience. Now moving on to our next best practice, highlighting what's important. Data visualizations can contain, display, and communicate lots of information, but you can make critical insights and data points stand out by directing your audience's attention to what's important. It's important to consider your audience at this point. How data savvy are they? How complex are your charts? What is important for them? What you highlight for your CEO might be very different to what you highlight for the sales team. One way you can direct your audience's attention is to use conditional formatting. You might want to color data that is above or below defined thresholds or highlight clusters and outliers. You can use reference lines to see if you're on target to reach a goal or use trend lines to uncover patterns in your data. This is really important if your patterns are not very obvious. Or you can even project forecasts to predict what will happen next. This seems like it might take a lot of analysis to figure out, but it's actually really simple in Yellowfin. I'll show you. So now we're looking at our scatter plot. And we can see the trend lines that Yellowfin has put in for us. And this really helps me understand what this chart is telling me. We can see that the orange product is more profitable, but we sell more of the purple product. Let's create another chart. So I'll put in invoice date here and invoice amount here. So that makes us a line chart. Not the greatest line chart because there's a lot of data. So I'm just going to aggregate it like this. There we go. Much easier to read. So I can't quite figure out what the trend is just from this data alone. So I'm going to add in a trend line just like that. Great. And now that's much easier for me to interpret and understand the trend. So clearly tracking up. Then we started going down. Looks like we're starting to pick back up, um, but I would love to know if this is going to continue. And that's when we can add in forecast. So here is our forecast. Oh, and it does not look good um, going down pretty quickly. So this is the sort of insight that I would really want to show uh, colleagues. And that brings us to our last data best practice, collaboration.
Data visualizations reveal insights, but that's only half the challenge. The real value is created when insights are shared and acted upon. So don't let your stunning data viz go to waste. There are many ways you can share and collaborate on your insights. First up and most common in the analytics space is dashboards. Dashboards are designed to visually display KPIs in order to allow and give quick examination of actual performance. A typical dashboard is designed with high level reports that you can drill down into more for more information. You can customize these based on your audience. Another way to collaborate is to use broadcasts. Broadcasting allows you to schedule reports and alerts to users. This encourages higher adoption because users are alerted to important insights that require them to take action. You can also collaborate using storyboards. Storyboards are a presentation layer in Yellowfin that allow users to create slideshows with fully functional reports as well as text, images, and videos. So rather than having a static visual on a slide, you can embed interactive reports which allow you to dive further into the data during your presentation. Last and definitely not least, stories. Stories allow users to share and have dialogue in a blog format about their business metrics and add context and narrative without the need for external tools. Yellowfin Stories merges visual analysis with text in a collaborative environment by including reports, images, videos with narrative. Think about your audience. Are they data or text people? Yellowfin Stories let you cater for both. I'll show you how easy it is in Yellowfin. I've already started writing my story. I just need to add in one more chart. So I'm back in my report section and I just need to click on the story button. So I just select my draft story and it automatically inserts the whole report into my story. Now I can edit the story. And you can see I've added a nice image here. I have a title and some text. There's one chart, more text, and a few more charts. If I want, I can change this to a different chart from my report, um, but I'll keep this one as is. Now I'm ready to publish my report, my story. And I'm automatically prompted to share with people in my business. So I'll share with Emma and she'll get a notification saying I've shared the story with her. So this is my finished story. You can see who's viewed the story, people who read it and given an applause, and people can also comment. So you can even ask questions like Matt did, and then I can give him an answer, clicking there. As you've seen, there's many ways to collaborate. Choose the one that's gonna work best with your audience and deliver insights to decision makers wherever they make decisions. This brings us to the end of our top five best practices. To summarize, we've discussed what DataViz is, why it's important, and gone through our top five best practices. Choose the right visualization, formatting and styling, add clarity, highlight what's important, and collaborate. I've also shown you how easy it is to follow best practice using Yellowfin. I'll leave you with a few additional resources. I encourage you to check out the Yellowfin blog, which regularly covers more hot topics in the data analytics industry. You can also download a free trial of Yellowfin or access Yellowfin University, which has step-by-step -step tutorials to guide you. To finish off, I'll answer a couple questions that we received. First one, what are your views on pie charts? Oh, well, some people are very against pie charts and for a good reason. They're probably the most misused and misinterpreted chart. That's because you have to look at the legend repeatedly and if your metrics are quite similar to one another, it's really, really hard to tell the difference. People usually think pie charts are the best choice for looking at percentages, but really bar charts are easier to interpret. If you only have a few metrics, you could use a pie chart, um, but any more than two or three, I would explore other options. Second question, do you have any tips for making 3D charts? Well, there's a reason I didn't talk about 3D charts, and that's because they're really poor data viz. So please, please, please don't use them. 
3D charts can be really confusing and lead to incorrect conclusions. 3D charts are usually tilted in some way that tend to skew the human eye, and so they can't perceive how large things are. The risk of misinterpretation outweighs any sort of aesthetic for me. That's all the questions we have time for, but please reach out to your account manager or through our website if you have any more questions or want to learn more about Yellowfin.